Butter is arguably one of the greatest ingredients of all time, period. But we can make it even better. Oh yes, it's possible. And it only takes two ingredients and a food processor. So, well... The process of making your own butter seems a little bit extra. I say that a lot. Welcome to my channel, the channel of being extra in the kitchen. Fresh churned butter is very, very different from butter that you just bought at the store. Unless you're buying really expensive, high quality, then it's really hard to get that really nice fresh butter flavor. But you know, it's fermentation Friday, so we're not just gonna do butter, we're gonna culture our butter. But it's such a simple process, you literally just need cream and buttermilk, and that's it. Ironically, we're using buttermilk, and buttermilk is a byproduct, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. Just trust me. Now let's do this, shall we? Okay guys, this one is crazy easy. I feel like this is one of those things that your friends praise you for, but reality, it's actually super easy to make and you just don't tell them that. Okay, not really. Anyway, you're gonna start by mixing one quart or 946 milliliters of heavy cream with 3.5 tablespoons or 51 milliliters of cultured buttermilk. Make sure that bish is cultured. Just make sure to try and get cream that's low temp pasteurized. Just gonna be way more conducive to fermentation. Then just mix these two together in a large container. I used a one quart mason jar. And then cover your container with a lid loosely or with cheesecloth tied on as a lid. You know, we make do. And then let it sit at room temperature for one to two days. You know what's done when it has sort of an acidic tang to its scent and it has thickened a bit. Then just pour out all that good stuff right into a food processor and then blend it in your food processor until little bits of butter separate from the buttermilk. Don't over or under process this. First it'll sort of hit a whipped cream stage, then once it surpasses that, then it'll reach a point where you actually see little beady butter, little beady butter, whoa it's tongue twister, little beady buttery solid separated from its liquid. Then just strain that through cheesecloth placed over a mesh strainer and let it drip off the excess. Then just place your cute little butter ball in a, into a medium sized bowl and just lightly press on the butter to get it to clump together and then start to expel the excess buttermilk inside of the butter. You want to get rid of this stuff. Now to do that you're going to fill the bowl with cold water then simply press the butter with the back of a wooden spoon. You'll sort of notice a cloudy creamy sort of substance come out of it and that means there's still buttermilk inside the butter. So just keep doing that and then drain the water out and then fill it back up with cold water and then just keep repeating that whole expelling process then draining out the liquid and don't worry so much about the butter falling out whenever you drain the liquid out of the bowl it should be stuck to the bowl and you know that you're done whenever the water finally runs clear now once you get to that point press the butter just a bit more to drain any water that it accumulated during that process and then of course if you want to salt it you can totally add a pinch of fine sea salt here and fold it in but I prefer to leave mine unsalted then just refrigerate it for 10 minutes to harden up a bit pull it back out and shape your new butter baby into a rough rectangle or really any shape you want and store it wrapped in wax paper in your fridge and well that's it it's literally that easy now of course I could have stopped there and you know I really probably should have but you know I went the extra mile and smoked my butter as well yeah that's right I smoked it. Now to do that, I actually used a smoke gun, which I'll put the link to in the description below. So I basically just put the butter in a container, filled my smoke gun with hickory wood chips, and then filled that container with smoke, closed it, and let it sit for about eight minutes, then removed the lid to aerate it, and voila smoked butter. Now I would tell you what to use your butter on, but I'm sure you have a pretty firm grasp on that, or at least I hope you do. Now one thing I would recommend is obviously to use this butter for literally anything that just needs a simple schmear of good butter or you know just has butter as a pronounced flavor because this is a tasty one but out of all things i would recommend this b-roll and that is it. So, homemade butter. You done gun did it, you done gun seen it, maybe you won't do it. Lots of people probably are not gonna do this, but there's a lot of pride that you can take in making your own butter. Because if you have a really nice homemade bread that you made, or some nice fresh baked biscuits, and you put this homemade butter on it, it is going to change your entire life. Maybe, maybe not quite that much. It's just, look, it's just delicious, all right? That's why we do this at the end of the day. That's my selling point. I hope that it suffices. I hope that that suffices. Hope that does wonders for you. Hope it means some, you know what I mean. Anyway, as an update, I'm working on a lot of new videos right now. I've got a cast iron restoration and seasoning video coming up. 
just uh, you know, just for those of you who watch the end of this, you get to know about this stuff. So thank you for watching all the way to this point. Just want to say thank you. I want to see what you guys want. So be sure to leave a comment below on any ideas that you want to see or things that you want to see me make. Uh, yeah, at this point, I'm starting to get really sweaty because my hair is down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in a couple of days. That sounds a little better. Huh, that sounds a little better. Hmm.